Hi my name's Matt, welcome back to the shop and today I'm talking about valves and valve rotation. So I got a comment after I did my um, collet tool, my replacement for that stupid stick with its plunger on. And I think I might have one. Nope, not right, I think I put them all in the bin. Um, so my issue was, with, uh, was the fact that... Um, Sticking a drill on it may crush the stem and you put basically big scores in it and when it goes in your valve guard it's going to fuck everything up. And then people started arguing saying yeah well you could put a drill on it uh, with a flexi pipe so that takes any of the, you know you don't have to grip it and so on and so forth. The problem is, and people still didn't get the point, because the problem is it's the drill as well, it's the lack of feedback. You don't need to go fast. What happens is, is if you spin a, a, a drill, a, a if you use your drill to spill the valve really fast, all that's going to happen is, is you're just going to squish out all your compound paste and you're just rubbing valve on valve so you're not grinding anything. Um, number two is it, it isn't a fast process, it's a grind. When you do valve, when you do lapping, and I don't mean valves, Tom Lipton is doing lapping at the moment and um, he has a video series about lapping. I'll put a link in the description, go and check that out, it's pretty cool. But basically, you know, he's getting seriously high tolerances, uh, not tolerances, he's getting seriously flat surfaces, we're talking like uh, millionths of an inch, really, really flat surfaces that he's actually measuring, and you can see that on the video, um, just by literally backwards and forwards, rotating backwards and forwards, a bit of rotation backwards and forwards, from plate to plate to plate, making some lapping plates to make things seriously flat, or when you want to measure stuff and all the rest of it. Um, Machines are generally only used when you want to make lenses, so you want to make a parabolic shape or convex or concave shapes in lenses in glass. And even when you see them machines move, they're oscillating and they're not really going that fast, it's really slow. And you want to stick a drill on it, I don't understand why you've been such a lazy bastard. You do it by hand so you can feel and you can variate the pressure. When you're pulling with your drill, that flex tube is taking out some of that feedback from that pressure. Do it by hand, it's the, the most, you know, it's the simplest way. It's so you know how long you're doing it, because you can feel it, you go, oh, there we go, it's going all, it's running really smooth all of a sudden, it's gritty, 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 then smooth. You keep on putting compound into it, and you keep on going until you get that smooth feeling. It's all about the feedback, it doesn't need to be fast. Um, and you don't want to wobble your valve stem inside your valve guide. That's what you don't want to do. That drill wobbling around, yes, the pipe takes a bit of that out. Um, but if you're doing it by hand, then the forces that you are using, or the speeds that you are using, are really low. So you're not going to wobble this out. You're not going to turn this into this. But that's what it wasn't what this video is about. One other comment that I want to quickly reach on is some guy said, you don't want to rotate it, you want to oscillate it. Sent me to a website with one of these stupid contraptions I've seen before. So it's just a gearbox thing that goes on the end of a drill or what have you, and it oscillates. It goes backwards and forwards. He says you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to go round and round with a valve because you'll get circular scratches. And I said, don't be a fucking idiot, because the valves are ground circular. This is how you get perfect circles. You have to circulate. So the grind marks in the actual valve surface, if you use an electron microscope is radial scratches all the way around that's how it that's how you make the valve the valve seat itself is cut radially you don't start oscillating it you cut it radially the valve itself was machined in a circular motion everything is circular scratches and the fact of the matter is what you don't want imagine we zoom in here so you've got your face like this Radial scratches are fine because the air that's trying to leak past would leak into one of these and it'll just go round and round in a circle. What you don't want is linear scratches because then the air will just find a little pocket and it'll just piss in and your valves will leak. So you want radial scratches. The guy's an idiot. Just, yeah, people like that just fucking annoy me. That, what that is, is that's people who, um, or businesses, or someone who has a bright idea, comes out with some stupid thing just so they can sell you their junk. Um, but... Further on that point, I want to talk about, and I was looking for my board rubber, um, further on that point, what I want to talk about is the fact that valves rotate. And it is actually done on purpose. So what happens is, is you have a valve seat. So just imagine we have a head and we're looking down into the valve. 
So you're looking down into the valve, there's your seat, so this is an angled surface going in, and then you can see your valve guide in the bottom there, and you can see all the way through. Now what happens is, is especially your exhaust valve, you get carbon buildup. You've got a seat that looks like this, there's your port, there's your seat, and as the carbon starts swinging around here, it deposits carbon and shit on your valve seat. So it deposits carbon, blah, 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 blah. And if you have a valve seat like this, and then it's got loads of chunky, chunky carbon randomly just in one spot, when your valve comes to seat properly, it warms, and that leaves a gap. Now, it's squashed here, that's fine, but on the other side of the valve, all you've got is just a big gap between your valve seat and the air can just piss pie and you have a leaky valve. So how do we get rid of that? Well, you take your cylinder head off and you clean it. But we are trying to engineer a way around this so you don't have to take your valves apart and clean them and all the rest of it. Can we have some kind of mechanical procedure that causes the valves to be self-cleaning? Yes, we can. And what we do is we rotate the valves, just like you're lapping, just like you're grinding. And if you listen to that idiot, with his oscillation tool or whatever, well, this will just blow his mind. But what we want to do is, when we clean a surface um, with the lapping compound, we are rotating it and we are cleaning the surface of the valve guide, uh, of the valve seat with the valve itself. And we can do the same thing. And the way we do that is we cause the valve to rotate in its seat. So we want it to rotate, but how do we cause this valve rotation? Well, what we do is when we look at our valve tip, we look at our valve tip and it's a circle. And when you actually look at your camshafts, it's very hard to see by eye, but the way we design them is if you look at a circle and we just draw a line out, this is going this fast, this is going this fast, and the middle is not really rotating at all, it just spins around a point, it just changes um, which way it's facing in a sense where the further you go out the more of a speed that it's travelling. And what we do is we have our camshaft so our cam lobe comes down, but what we do is we offset the centre of this cam lobe. So the centre of pressure for the cam lobe, the cam doesn't sit in the middle, the cam sits to one side. And basically we're pushing the valve like this, in this direction. Because it's a rotating element, it's coming down, it's hitting the top of your valve. And we're pushing here, and we're pushing this side as well, but it's not to the same extent. We've got more surface area here from the centre than here. So we cause a gradual rotation. It is a very gradual rotation. But every time the can comes down, it hits it, it rotates the valve. It rotates the valve. So every time, but this isn't in the seat, that's what's important. What's happening is, is the valve, there's my big valve. The valve has been, so there's, there, just say, there's, oh, I can't do this. There's your seat where my hand is, just so that's closed. It pushes it down, and as it pushes it down, it rotates it. Then it comes back up, and it rotates it. Then it comes back up, and it rotates it. And this pounding, it's not so much grinding, this pounding of the valve coming up into a different spot means that the carbon gets squashed and hit and hopefully every time the valve opens that carbon crumbles away. So the valve is constantly rotating and every time it comes up, when it comes back up it smashes in a new place so the valve is hammering at the seat and it should be hopefully shocking all that carbon off. It's not perfect, it would be great if you could have a grinding feature but we don't have that. But your cams are off centre, that's what I'm trying to say. So if you have your cam like that, you'll have a centre line down your cam and the centre line of the valve and the centre line of the cam are offset from one another which will cause the valves to rotate in one direction more than it does the other. And this rotation, this constant change of position also means that this is why we cut and grind to try and make that perfect circle. So every time this valve comes and sits against this surface, because they're both perfect circles that are concentric with each other, it should, already, it should always see it. So I hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.